Proverbs 27, 23 tells us to know well the condition of our flocks, meaning we should take stock of our resources and what we have. The second H of our four H's of financial wisdom, the health element, helps us do just that. With this element, we use something we call the Live, Give, O, Grow pie diagram. Now, understanding there are only five main things you can do with money, we want to take a simple snapshot of how we're spending our money today, and we do that through the use of the pie diagram. The five uses that show up in this pie diagram are live, give, owe, and grow, with there being two O's, owing debt and owing taxes. Now, in order to complete your pie and figure out how you're spending your money today, you need five pieces of information. First, you need your income. Then you need to know how much you gave away, how much you paid in debt and taxes, and how much you're saving or how much you used to grow. You take those five spending elements and you subtract them from your income, and that will give you your live wedge of the pie. And this will give you a picture of what your financial life looks like today. What's so great about this pie is that each of these wedges is intimately connected with biblical wisdom, which ultimately helps us better align our hearts with God's heart. If we take the live wedge, the live wedge challenges us to practice care, contentment, and enjoyment in our lifestyle. We look to the Bible for instruction, and we find that it tells us that we need to care for the needs of those closest to us by providing them food and clothing. Second, we need to be content with what we have today. Now, we can be content with what we have today because our contentment is actually found in God and not in our things. And finally, the Bible tells us to gratefully enjoy what God has given to us. It's okay to enjoy what God has given to us as long as we have some limits. Now, this gives us great freedom to view money as a tool to ultimately accomplish God's purposes. And that allows me to view every spending decision I make as a spiritual decision with the opportunity to honor God by how I do it my lifestyle becomes a great opportunity to honor God. The next wedge of the pie is the give wedge. And this wedge has the unique ability to to connect me into God's story in the world. And what I find is that when I give with this perspective, the act of giving has this amazing way to break the power that money has over my life. And so when we give, we enter the promise of Matthew 6, 21 about where we put our treasure driving what our hearts desire. And so if we want our heart to desire things that are in heaven, if we want our heart to put our treasure in heaven, then we need to be spending our money with things that will actually be in heaven, giving towards the things that we want to treasure the most. The next wedge is the owe debt wedge. And this wedge alerts us to the dangers of debt. Not only does debt enslave us to our lenders, but it also restricts our ability to use our resources for other things. See, when we take on debt, we are predetermining one of the places where we must spend money in the future. And this makes a presumption upon our future, and it presumes upon God to continue to provide for us. Therefore, we must seek to be careful with debt and look to get rid of it as quickly as we can whenever we have debt in place. The other O wedge, O taxes, presents a little bit more of a quandary. I I don't think I've ever met anybody who likes paying taxes. And most people I've met have no trouble complaining about how the government is using our tax money. However, the Bible directs us to change our perspective when it comes to taxes. And we try to teach people is that taxes should we pay with gratitude. And that's a little bit countercultural. And why is that? Well, we pay them for, with gratitude because they reflect God's provision of income. By all means, we should hold our elected officials responsible for how they spend money. But we should also understand that taxes are a part of an ordered society created by God and that when we pay taxes, we are merely participating in a function that is necessary to have an orderly and functioning government. As Paul said, pay taxes to whom taxes are owed and recognize that they are God's provision to me and I need to be grateful for that. Now, the final wedge is the grow wedge, and this wedge challenges us to exercise financial maturity by being willing to give up our desires for today in light of what we are seeking in the future, what God has for us in the future. Proverbs 6 is a great example. It tells us to look at how the ant stores up for the next winter, meaning we need to be mindful of the future when deciding how we are spending money today. Now, it doesn't say that the ant stores for 90 winters. It just says one winter. So it's important that we ask God what he wants us to be saving toward and then change how we are spending money today so that we can accomplish those goals, but not thinking we need to save everything all the time. And all of these things will demonstrate great financial maturity as we align our uh, goals with God's desire for the world. Now, with an understanding of these five wedges and the biblical principles that guide each and every one of them, we can now take a look at our current pie and ask, does our current allocation match biblical wisdom? Does it match with what God is asking us to do? This pie diagram will give us a financial snapshot into our financial health today, and we can assess whether we like it or not. And if we don't like it, 
we can change it. Now finally, the pie diagram helps us realize a few important things about financial decisions. And what it depicts is that there are no independent financial decisions. If I'm going to change one wedge of the pie, the others have to change as well. I can't just change one, and so they are related to one another. It also tells me that within my changes, there are going to be simultaneous competing priorities that I must analyze. There are going to be things that I want in multiple pieces of the pie. Finally, it teaches me that the longer term my perspective, the better my decision I will make today. This is true of eternity, just like it's true today. So when I'm making a financial decision, I want to have a long-term perspective in mind. And instead of thinking, how will this affect me three, four, five years from now? I should be thinking about it in 30 years from now. But more importantly, I should be thinking how it will affect me 30 million years from now. And when I align my pie with God's wisdom along this way, and I think about it eternally with that mindset, I will make decisions radically different than I would if I was just thinking about my pie for tomorrow. And so I would encourage you to take a look at your pie and then take a look at where God is calling you to go into the future and see if you can align up your pie with those aspirations that God has for you.